Okay, let's go into a little bit more detail about this fundamental theorem of calculus, the thing that links differentiation and integration right there in two very, very simple equations. Let's start with that definition, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it essentially says that we have some function y that looks like this, y is equal to f of x and y is continuous and differentiable so you can draw it without taking your pen off the page and there's no sharp corners or edges. Then you have this area under a curve a and the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the derivative of a with respect to x is equal to y. Well we also know that a is equal to the limit as delta x tends to zero of the sum from i equals one up to n of delta x times y of xi. So this is the big idea. You've got something that links derivatives to the area underneath the curve. Now, one thing that you need to know is that as delta x tends to zero, this sum in here, this guy, has a special symbol of its own. It's called an integral, and it looks like this. A is equal to the integral of y dx. That little dx thing there, that's like a whole complete symbol. It's really just illustrating that you have let a delta x, the size of your strip, tend to zero. That's why that's still there. It tells you what you're integrating with respect to. So if we put those two things together now, this one and this one, these are the partnership really, that's differentiation and integration working together. We have dA by dx, is equal to y and the integral of y dx is equal to a. You can also write this using Newton's notation. So it's essentially the same thing. You can say the derivative of a function, if that function is equal to something else, then the integral of that something else will be equal to that function. So these are saying identically the same thing. Some textbooks prefer this version, some textbooks prefer this version, but they are one and the same thing. So they're saying exactly the same thing. In fact, we're gonna use both of them actually as we go through. And what these are both saying is that integration is the reverse process to differentiation. Okay, so let's work through an example to see what we're actually talking about here. Let's imagine that you have got the example of the curve of y equals x squared, and you want to know the area between x is equal to zero and x is equal to one. y is equal to x squared, and we want to know what is the area between x equals zero and x is equal to one. So essentially we've got two options here. We've got two different ways that we can calculate this. We know that's the area there. We know that the area, you can work it out by doing this summation. You can also work it out by doing the integral. So let me show you both ways and show you how they end up being equivalent. So you have two options here. The first option is that you could say, well, this area is equal to the limit as delta x tends to zero, and actually work it out by hand, of i equals one up to n of delta x y of x i. Or option two is you could say, well, a, this thing here, is equal to the integral of y 
dx. But we only care about this between 0 and 1. So here in this one, this would be between x1 is equal to 0 and xn is equal to 1. And in here, there's a simpler way to draw in these limits. You can just say that we only care about this between 0 and 1 and put them in like that. So let's try option 1 first. But essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to take these two options and we're going to do them both and show that they end up giving you the same thing. So using option 1 then, A is the limit as delta x tends to 0 of this thing here of i equals 1 up to n of delta x. Now y of xi is just, the function is just squaring it. So we'll put that in, so it's going to be xi squared. And this is between xi is equal to 0 and xn is equal to 1. Delta x is the width of each chop. And there are going to be n chops in total between x is 0 and x is 1. So you could actually rewrite this as delta x is equal to 1 over n. And as delta x tends to 0, n is going to tend to infinity. So we can rewrite this thinking in those terms. And as we do so, let's just expand out this summation a little bit and have a look at what's going on here. So we have got delta x is just 1 over n. And then we've got xi squared. So x0 is just going to be equal to 0. x1 is going to be delta x. It's one step along delta x, which is just 1 over n, all squared. The next step along, two hops along, will be 2 over n, or 2 times delta x. That's going to be squared plus the next one along will be 3 over n squared. You're essentially just evaluating y at each one of these steps, exactly as we had before, all the way up to n over n all squared. Now, when you have this long string, actually every single one of these terms is going to have an n squared in the bottom, which you can take out. So this is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over n cubed of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to n. And each one of these terms is still going to be squared along the way. In fact, there is actually a formula for this thing here. You may have seen it before, of course, when you've been looking at uh, geometric series, sums of geometric and arithmetic series. But this is actually equal to n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. So this entire thing here, the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1, 2n plus 1, oh sorry, it's n, n plus 1, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. So this entire thing is equal to n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all divided by n cubed times 6. Now, as always with limits, you can evaluate these. So there's going to be an n in the top and an n in the bottom are going to cancel. The limit of the entire thing altogether of two things multiplied by each other is the same as the limit of each of those things separately then multiplied together afterwards. So this is the same as 1 over 6 times the limit as n tends to infinity of n plus 1 over n, if we just split up these fractions, times the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1 over n. Which if you have a little look at these, we've got an n on the bottom and n on the top. They're both the same size. So as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, these two are going to cancel each other out and this whole thing is just going to go to 1. Likewise here, you've got an n on the top and an n on the bottom. And as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, these two things are going to grow at the same size. So those two will cancel each other out. And all you're left with is this factor of 2 on the top. So this entire thing is going to end up having a limit of 2. So that means that 
A, back at the beginning, we've kind of finished it now, A is equal to two over six. Everything else in that limit just tends to one, which is equal to one over three. So that was option one. That's kind of the annoyingly long way. Now let me show you the neat quick way by using integrals instead of summations. So let's now try option two. So for option two, we know that a is equal to the integral between naught and one of y dx. We also know, don't forget, that dA by dx is equal to y, and we know that y is equal to x squared. So putting these two things together, essentially we know that dA by dx is equal to x squared. And this one here, a is equal to the integral between 0 and 1 of x squared dx. So what we're saying here is that we're looking for a function a. We're looking for something called a that when you differentiate it, you get x squared. So what needs to be differentiated to give you x squared? Well, let's try a few things. Let's try d by dx of x cubed. Well, if we were differentiating that, we would have 3x squared, which is nearly x squared, but not quite. This pesky 3 is kind of getting in the way. So we can try and include that in here. Try and cancel that out before we get to it. How about we try something like x cubed over 3? We try and cancel out the 3 before it even arrives. Well, if you differentiate that, you do indeed get 3x squared over 3, which is equal to x squared, which is what we want. This is what we want. So we know what you have to differentiate to give you x squared. It's this thing in here. And that is your answer. That's what a is. dA by dx is equal to x squared or y. So we've done it. You've kind of done it. It doesn't feel like you're doing it because you're just trying out a few different things until, you've, until you spot something that fits. But you are essentially answering this question. The thing that you need to differentiate to get x squared, this thing here, is x cubed over three. That's our a. So to get from the integral of x squared back to a, it's just x cubed over three. We have to evaluate this from x is equal to zero and x is equal to one. Now we kind of played this sort of trick before when we were toying around with antiderivatives, the opposite process to differentiation. We were saying, what do you need to differentiate to end up with this? And now we're saying the reverse of that process is, if I integrate this, what do I end up with? It's all kind of one and the same thing. So the only thing that remains now is to evaluate x at these particular limits. And it just so turns out that to do that, you put in the top number first inside this bracket and then take away this bracket with the second number. So it's like this. This is equal to x cubed over 3 at x is equal to 1 minus x cubed over 3 at x equals 0, which is equal to 1 over 3 minus 0, which means that a is also equal to 1 over 3. So notice there, that's the value of a we got when we integrated. And this right here is the value of a that we got when we went through all that faff of sorting out all of the summation. So there are two things that I want you to notice about this example. The first thing, thing I, is that they both have the same answer. And thank goodness, because that's kind of how we defined what an integral was in the first place. But it's kind of nice and comforting to realize that that really is the case. And there's nothing special about x squared here. We could have picked any function at all, really. I just picked something nice and simple to demonstrate the ideas. You could have picked anything at all. And as long as you could work out this summation, and as long as the integral worked, 
they would end up giving you exactly the same answer because that is what integration actually means. The second thing I want you to notice is just a little trick that we did in here of where you're evaluating an integral between two limits. Just to slightly formalize that for you, what I was saying was that if you are taking the integral of something between a and b, that is equal to f of b minus f of a, where df by dx is equal to fx. Just to make that super clear, that's how you do it. That's how you evaluate an integral at limits. Okay. In summary, I mean, this is the key idea. It's called the fundamental idea for a reason. The fundamental idea, the thing that links differentiation and integration right there in two very, very simple equations. There is no reason why everyone shouldn't have access to the very best education. Welcome to Calculus One. To introduction to astronomy. To introduction to philosophy. To statistics. Microeconomics. Psychology. Let's get started.